Hello again. So I thought this would be a great time to talk about 32-bit uh, images and bit depth and how this all works in your favor or against you with regards to height maps um, and quite frankly anything else to do with 32 bits. So um, I wanted to show you uh, this range here. So we've just got like a grayscale. This basically is being represented as sort of a zero to one range and um, in 8 and 16 bits uh, you're kind of working from black to just white. If I go ahead and create myself a terrain, say a smaller terrain, something that's shorter, and I'm only using this small amount of information right here, just this tiny little chunk instead of the full range, um, I end up with very limited values to make this work. And ultimately what this ends up looking like is the difference between, say, this very pixelated line versus this much smoother line. Because this would be representing full range versus just a small number of values in here that will give you more of a uh, stepped sort of pattern. Now when you deal with 32 bits, there's another element to this and that is um, you're going above the range of 0 to 1. So it can actually go above those main values. So this is another important thing to kind of acknowledge um, because it can lead to some visual errors. Now, if we look at this uh, interesting little thing, um, first of all, on your uh, screen, you might see some visual banding that might be happening here. And this is not necessarily uh, related to what I've done. It's more, uh, a statement about how your monitor will be handling this gradient or the video compression in this case um, and so that can create some visual banding but the banding is not necessarily there so we have that to contend with as well but um, if we look at this uh, we're missing some of the information because uh, once it gets to white it clips the information just doesn't show you anymore you can't see anything beyond that and if I just go ahead and adjust the exposure well, you can reveal that this exploding sun or star or whatever this was, was actually really happy about exploding. So there you go. Um, so this is the deal. Um, we can have information go above that value of one and it can basically just completely clip out. We won't see what's going on above it, even though that information is technically there. Um, so if I go back to Gaia here and I take a look at this, um, I've got my sand dunes and I've done a bias gain and I've, I've worked to try and make these, you know, not too overall tall, right? There, you can see it's nice thin crust uh, pizza kind of deal here. And uh, sorry if I made anybody hungry, but uh, it's very thin. It's not using the full on range. If I go ahead and export this, so I'll say, okay, um, uh, save current and uh, export it. other dunes. I'm just going to do this. I got a 16-bit PNG image. 16-bit does contain a broader range of information. It's still going from the, the sort of the 0 to 1, like black to white value, but in its steps in between, instead of, you know, a value of 256 values, it's got way more values in between, so it's got more overall potential. Um, I could go to something like an EXR, which would be a 32-bit. Um, uh, TIFF is also capable of 16 and, and 32 bits as well. Um, but I can just go with just the 16-bit, which is fine. Um, let's go with dunes here. Uh, we'll save that as a version 2. Save that out. Oh, that one already exists too? Really? There you go. Dunes 3. Apparently got to stop calling things just dunes. Um, so I've got that in there and we're just going to switch over to ZBrush. So I've loaded them in and I'm going to do my typical sort of masking mask by color and intensity. Let's go with texture map off and let 
let's go with my disk formation which should push on that and value there and what you see is a really kind of rotten representation of all that information we see these stepped values and that's what I was talking about if I wanted the full range in here I have to export the full range I need all of it in order to work with so I'm just gonna undo any deformation to this and we're going to go back and um, collect it again. So here we are back in Gaia, and I've got my, my dunes loaded back up. And rather than the bias gain, which I used to shorten everything and get it down to the level that I liked, um, I re removed that, and I'm adding an auto levels. And the auto levels now, what it's doing is it's taking that whole range, and it's bringing it uh, all of its highest points all the way up to white and so we've got from you know the black the based bottom -est value all the way up to the highest possible value and so it's getting that that full range back in and um, exporting it back out by saving current uh, means that I can now utilize that so if I go ahead and let's import now that dunes full You're going to see something distinctly different here, obviously. Uh, we'll go back to my masking, uh, mask by intensity, back to texture map, turn it off, back to deformation, and I could probably use like a one there. Is that enough? Not a whole lot of distance going. Let's just change materials. Uh, but you can see here, um, now at this angle, that I don't get that stepping that was a problem before. I'll just go back, and do that, and we're just going to change that to something like 10, which is going to be a lot more extreme, but that's fine. really see what's going on here and I'll just remove the mask and you can see it's a lot smoother everything is in there because I've got that full range going on so this is what you're looking for even if you want something short you define the shortness by how far you push it when you deform it so be it a displacement uh, deformer uh, like we're running like a displacement map in, in Maya or 3 max or something like that or if you're using some kind of displacer or deformer in 3D coat, ZBrush, Mudbox, whatever, um, you're going to get this. Um, if you use like the texture deformer that I showed in that other one, again, you're going to get these things. But um, this is essentially just a mask. It just says what is the highest point and what is the lowest point, and then you define how far that can go. And as long as you're using full range, you'll get full detail. Now, of course, there is another issue that we have to look at. And that would be the issue of clipping. So as we see here, I've got a mountain range and I've got this area here, which is all flattened off. It doesn't look quite right. So um, this is a result of values going above that value of one. Um, in a, a case here, we look at this um, when it's creating that mountain it's got a couple of things in play so it's got a noise pattern that's generating the the noise that's there and it's got this other 
deformer that is basically creating sort of like a mass. It's cutting it off. It's zeroing out those edge values. So it's very similar in a lot of ways to say, um, let's just create a, yeah, like a Voronoi and we'll maybe adjust the scale here like that. And we'll go with a zero borders. And you can see you're getting essentially the same thing that the mountain is giving to you, right? The same kind of idea. So you have your main thing, and then you have this thing which is kind of cutting out the shape uh, in order to make sure you have higher and lower areas. So with this, we have some other features that are built into it. So we have the type of noise that it's doing. We've got the seed that goes in there. Uh, we've got where the edge exists and then the overall scale of the uh, pattern. And that's what we have in here. We've got these things. And then we've got, you know, a margin. And we can set that to auto, etc. So um, with this, what's happening here is part of that is going outside of that mask region. So normally speaking, it should just take it and deform it and melt it down. And that's all good and fine. But when it gets to sections where um, an area might go above or below the value of one, so let's say um, we have a magical value of one. Let's make, like, I don't know, but a nice pretty green line. There we go. And just kind of drag that out. And we have these wonderful spires, and those spires, if any of them goes when they're generated to a value above one um, in its current form, all that's gonna happen is that guy, when it goes to process it, it's going to ignore that portion of it. It's just gonna cut it off and pay attention to the rest of it, and then proceed to deform it to that shape. And in this particular case, what that means is we end up with a chunk carved off. And that's what we see. So we're seeing right here a chunk that has been carved off because it's exceeded those proper values. Um, and I'm, I'm I am assuming to a certain deal here. I do know that's the way that it overall can work. I'm not 100% positive that that is the case here, but to confirm my idea is here I've got height set to equalized, and if I change the height evaluator, I get that information. And look at that, we've got this ridge that's sticking out, which means it was very likely going beyond that range. And it's cutting in a very distinct pattern of this area that looks like, normally speaking, would be out of that range. So um, you you have to you have to consider that possibility. So um, yeah, if you go ahead and change the height mode, um, that can can work in your favor. Other things, of course, are to uh, change the seed value or you can go ahead and just create your own mountain range and try and control it a little bit that way. So um, if you ever see those kinds of issues, just be aware of that. And right now there there is occasionally a situation where um, you'll start off with a value. So here you see um, I've, I've worked with this value in the natural range and it's allowing me to see it. So if I go with enhanced, you can see it gets cut off. But with natural, it's going above the range uh, or the final range. So it's producing, it's allowing, it's going with 32-bit values. Apparently this one's handling it in a way that's just fine. But as soon as it moves on to the next node, the next node is now gonna clip it and it's gonna chop off a portion. So whenever you start working with stuff and you see, oh, 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 well, I, I notice 
that um, as soon as I add a next node, I get part of my piece chopped off. That means you need to um, adjust for that. So uh, a simple, easy way to, to deal with that would be to go into something like an auto levels or a bias gain and uh, drop those values. So you go like this, and normally when you do auto levels, it goes up, right? It should always pop up to the top value. But here it went down. And that means those values are actually higher than the software actually allows. And you notice when I move on to the displace now, it doesn't clip anymore. So um, again, it's all about those, those higher values. Um, they're easy enough to fix. It's a glitch that uh, you'll, you'll encounter in a lot of different ways. And now that you know what it is and what's happening, you can prepare yourself and, and uh, make something cool. Um, there, there is another overall issue that um, if I had taken something like this and I went ahead and exported a map, I would get that clipping issue because unless I was exporting to something that was 32 bit, I wouldn't have those values. Those values would be cut off at white and the, this top portion just wouldn't be there. So if you ever export a map and you get visual errors there, again, that's likely the problem. Add an auto levels and then re export and you should be good. In fact, overall, when you're going to export to the final map, maybe just adding an auto levels all the time might be a good thing to do, be it uh, too small a range or too large a range. Um, so there you go. That's all about the mountain ranges. Ha ha ha. Okay, I'm ending on that horrible dad joke. Um, see you in the next video.